Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on the standard normal distribution. I have on the screen an Excel worksheet that offers a graphical illustration of a standard normal distribution. And I'm going to make this available to you uh, on Blackboard. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how it works here for uh, the left side of distribution and also both sides of distribution to calculate the area under the curve. But first, let me take a minute and talk about a standard normal distribution and how it's different than a normal distribution. Sometimes these terms are used interchangeably, but actually they're, they're two different things. Uh, in essence, the standard normal distribution is a special kind of normal distribution where the mean is zero and the variance is one. Uh, also, the, the uh, standard deviation is one because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And of course, the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So when either the standard deviation or the variance is one, the other variable is going to be one as well. So what I have here in this graph is a standard normal distribution. This has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And this stretches from a z value of negative three, a z score negative three, to a z score of three, as that covers the vast majority of the area under a curve. So down toward the bottom of this graph, what I've done is I have a value here, uh, x. And this value is the observed score. This is an observed z-score. And what this graph will do is demonstrate the area under the curve. Also, I have a display in percentages. But the graph will display the area under the curve uh, that's indicated by that given observation, that given value of x, where x is a z-score between negative 3 and 3. So you can see that where the uh, observation is equal to negative 3, you can barely see, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but there's a, just a little bit of green there. The area under the curve is just 0.13%, and 99.87% is not under the curve. So z uh, or this observation, z score at negative 3, very low, very far to the left. So as we move the scroll bar to a different z value, you see this is negative 2, you can see now this is, this is two full standard deviations below the mean. That's what z score 2 is, in this case negative 2. A z-score of negative 2 is two full standard deviations below the mean. So the area on the curve is still relatively small, at 2.28%, and 97.72% is not under the curve. As we approach one standard deviation, now it's a larger portion, 15.87% is under the curve. As you can see here, the green area, very clear and 84.13% is not under the curve. So all the, all the values in the green represent 15.87% of this curve. And all the values in the red represent 84.13% of the area under the curve. So now is the, um, this observation comes to zero, you can see that it's half and half. Left side is under the curve, 50%, and the right side, the red area here, is also 50%. Z equals zero, that's the mean, so that makes sense, that half would be on one side of the mean, half the values, and half the values would be on the other. And similarly, as we progress up toward a Z of one, you can see the opposite of what we saw at Z negative one. Now we have over 84% under the curve and a little less than 16% not under 
as we approach 2. See opposite of the negative 2. And then as we approach the, the maximum that I've set this for, allows an observation of z-score 3. Uh, almost all the values under the curve and just a small uh, amount or yeah a small amount not under the curve right so 99.87 under the curve 0.13 percent not under the curve and you can't even really see the red over there so this is how this is a graphical illustration of or graphical representation of the standard normal distribution and I set it up here we can just use the slider bar, the uh, scroll bar, to slide to the value you want. Uh, it's in tenths of a z-score. There's the increments that you can move it. And over here to the left is the data that drives this graph. So as I demonstrated uh, in the earlier portion of the video, I have another tab here. Now this allows you to calculate from both sides. Uh, from the left and from the right, and then see the area not under the curve in the middle. So let's start with something fairly straightforward. Let's go to a z of uh, negative 3 and positive 3. So the a is from the left. This a uh, variable is from the left of the distribution, and the b is from the right. So a is from the left moving to the right, and b is from the right moving to the left. So you can see here uh, with a z-score value uh, for a being negative 3 and a z-score value for b being 3, uh, for each variable, this looks familiar, the 0.13% and the 99.87. Uh, but now cumulatively, I have this as total for x sub 1 and x sub 2, but actually I'll change that for a and b. So the variable names match. Um, you can see the total area of the curve is now 0.27 and not under the curve 99.73. So just a little bit of green on each end. So as we start moving these toward the middle, a z of negative 2 and a z of 2, you can see there's uh, about four and a half percent that's under the curve. So these green areas here represent four and a half, a little more than four and a half percent uh, of the scores. And 95 point, uh, roughly 95.5 percent is represented by the area in red. As we move up to, or move the B value down to one uh, standard deviation, or a Z score one, and move a up to negative 1 standard deviation, or z equals negative 1, you can see now that the uh, it's roughly 16% on each side. So almost 32% is under the curve. The scores, 32% of the scores are under the curve. And a little bit more than 68% is represented as not under the curve, which is consistent what we know about the standard normal distribution in that 68% uh, of the scores fall between negative 1 and 1z. And here you can just see it uh, graphically. All right? And of course as you close in uh, and approach uh, 0 from both sides, the entire region will be covered uh, under the curve. So 100%. Now I have this set, uh, as you're using this to test out various scenarios, I have this set so that if you exceed uh, 100%, it's going to not display any scores. Because the way I have this set up, that would be, uh, that's not really a value that's any use to you, is to know uh, what these values would look like if A and B uh, overlap. Right? So similarly, if like this is set at a is negative 0 0.01, and you could have B as that same value, but if you pushed any lower, it's going to take these scores off. Uh, and there's no way to, uh, without changing the, the colors, no way to really illustrate that. And I wanted to keep both sides green uh, 
because they're really representing the same uh, construct, which is the area under the curve uh, cumulative from both sides. So uh, I hope this is helpful in uh, illustrating how uh, z-scores and the standard normal distribution uh, work. Uh, feel free to uh, download this from Blackboard and try out different scenarios. Uh, all the um, functions used over here to create the values that are used in the graphs, both for this uh, worksheet and the first worksheet I showed you are available. Nothing's hidden or locked. So feel, uh, feel free to look at this, play around with it, test out different scenarios. Uh, I think you'll find it useful. Uh, I know that I have um, explained z-scores in uh, another video, but this gives you a way to uh, see it on the graphs, which I think uh, is a, another helpful way to try to uh, learn this concept. So again, I hope you found this useful, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.